I was on the phone this morning um, to um, a colleague in Hong Kong um, who's a, a professor there who's done the evidence review for the World Health Organization on face masks and we're of the same mind that there is no evidence that general wearing of face masks by the public who are well affects the spread of the disease in our society. What matters right now, of course, is social distancing. And um, yes, it is true that we do see very large amounts of um, mask wearing, particularly in Southeast Asia. But we have always seen that for many decades, and it is entirely wired into some cultures um, that masks are worn quite frequently in, in, in open spaces. So it's very different. But in terms of the hard evidence and what the UK government recommends, we do not recommend face masks for general wearing by the public. Really three lines of evidence on face coverings. One is um, experimental mechanistic work. In other words, if I take this mask and start looking at droplets and so on, do droplets go through it? Or how do droplets get distributed? Or how does aerosol get distributed? Uh, and those studies all tend to show, yes, masks can stop things going through them. So they show a high level of protection. And then there's a second uh, level of advice, uh, evidence, which is around clinical trials, of what happens when people do or don't wear them. Um, and there the evidence is much weaker. In other words, you don't get 95% protection as you might do if you tested that mechanistically. You get some protection and it varies um, according to settings. And then there's observational studies which we're now seeing, which is what was the impact when masks were introduced in country A or country B or in environment A or B? Could you see a difference in the rates of infection? They're quite difficult to interpret because usually um, the intervention isn't a single thing like a mask. All sorts of things, other things changed at the same time. You put those uh, three e lines of evidence together and it reaches the conclusion that, that we did, um, say I think it was back in April, saying on balance masks have a positive effect um, in terms of stopping other people catching it from you, not from you catching it from other people, less evidence around that. Our advice on face masks was in April and we said face masks are of marginal positive value when used in enclosed spaces where crowding may occur and you can't keep two metres distance. Um, now, it's true that in, in, in April and during lockdown, of course, the value of the face mask is rather minimal because most people aren't going out. Mm -hmm. So it is sensible to think about timing, and this comes back to the point you raised earlier on yeah. about material differences between sage advice and actions. The timing is a different question. And timing um, now as we go into release of measures is a sensible time to start thinking about what, are, what other mitigating factors you, you want to put in place. And it means a greater police presence to ensure face coverings are being worn where this is required by law. We will also extend the requirement to wear a face covering to other indoor settings where you're likely to come into contact with people you do not normally meet, such as museums, galleries, cinemas and places of worship. We now recommend face coverings are worn in these settings and this will become enforceable in law from the 8th of August. I'm kidding. Greetings, Bill Nye here with more on masks. Here's a map of the United States. The red ink shows where people are wearing masks. The black ink shows where people are getting sick with coronavirus. I hope you can see the fewer the masks, the more the sick. And there's a perception that a virus can travel through the fibers of a mask like this red dot. Because viruses don't travel by themselves. Huh? They travel in droplets of spit and snot. And the fibers are a tangle. So when the droplet gets into the fibers of a mask, it gets trapped. This is not that hard to understand, everybody. That's why we have rules about wearing a mask. Now you know about rules. You pay taxes on the whole road, but you only get to drive on one side at a time. Otherwise, <laughs> so everyone, please wear a mask. Thank you. Oh, you can hear me fine, right through the mask. Greetings, everyone. Bill Nye here. 
Why do people in the scientific community want you to wear a face mask when you're out in public? Well, please consider the following. Face masks, like this one, prevent particles from my respiratory system from getting into the air and then into your respiratory system. Blocking the movement of air is an old trick. Here's a scarf. It blocks the movement of air around my throat. It helps keep me warm. This scarf won awards in the Washington State Fair for both design and workmanship. It can block the movement of air, but only to a certain extent. This is a homemade face mask. It has just two layers of cloth with a pipe cleaner sewn in to help it fit against the bridge of your nose. And it blocks the movement of air very effectively. If you're wearing one of these, you're protecting yourself and those around you. Here's an N95. These are made to block particles in the medical environment and when you're out mowing the lawn. This one's not sterilized, but it's pretty effective. <laughs> so the reason we want you to wear a mask is to protect you, sure. But the main reason we want you to wear a mask is to protect me from you and the particles from your respiratory system from getting into my respiratory system. Everybody, this is a matter literally of life and death. And when I use the word literally, I mean literally. A matter of life and death. So when you're out in public, please wear a mask. Thank you for joining me on Consider the Following.